Pop Pop. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. My hip hop affiliation is very big fan and entrepreneur. And a fun fact about me is I can speak French. Oh, nice. My name is Ajwa Kwajo. I am originally from Washington, D.C., but I've been in Bed Stuy for about 13 years. Um, I'm come to hip hop as a fan. And an interesting fact about me my first concert ever was Criss Cross <laughs> at the Carter wow. Baron. <laughs> in Northwest D.C. I feel like a very big role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we were there as a part of the foundation and we've been there up until now. So a very, very big role. Rapping, dancing, DJing, doing graffiti, because that is one of the original elements. Just, we've been a part of all of it. I think even like this most recent um, film on like Roxanne Chante, like yeah. shows how people were like writing, women right. were writing and like performing um, as teenagers, as kids, yeah. not even necessarily as like grown women, but like high school students still. Right. Um, from the from the very beginning. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that women in hip hop have always been like an integral part of hip hop. So my favorite female rapper of all time is Lauryn Hill. Um, <laughs> and I think that like Lauryn Hill did a bunch of things when she came out. So she was um, like a female and like a male crew, even though there was only three of them. But she was clearly the strongest musician, the strongest MC. She just was like the strongest in the group. Um, but she also had just like this very original style for the time period. Um, and she wasn't trying to do anything specific. It didn't seem she was just being like authentic. And so I think that she was like a really important role model at the time, Like even outside of the singing, outside of Sister Act 2, um, outside of whatever she did in film, just the rapping part. Um, and I say it's controversial because <laughs> even when Lauren Hill Unplugged comes out later on and people are like, this is weird. I'm like, she's still rhyming on here. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, she's still really good. Um, up until even like a couple months ago when she was touring and she goes like super meta and like she rhymes really over does. nice yeah. for what? Yeah. So like, <laughs> she well, rhymes over the song that good. samples her. Um, that samples her song. Um, so I've always just been like really impressed with her, like a follow of her. If she were to start a cult, I would be like a member, a card game member of her cult. <laughs> I feel like they're kind of tied. So I love Left Eye a lot. Mm. I think her rhyming ability, the things she talked about, also what she stood for and kind of representing like this very like Afro-futurist mm -hmm. kind of like... Mm black woman that I feel like, aside from like Missy Elliott and like a lot of people like that, like we didn't really, really see, I think was so cool. I think, unfortunately, she wasn't able to really, you know, reach the level that I feel like she could have, um, but definitely her. And then my other two are tied just because like I can't separate them. I love Lil' Kim. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says about whether or not Big wrote her raps or like, what was going on with them and her fighting faith, I don't care. I think she is still extremely talented. I think what she represented, like you said about Lauren Hill being mm -hmm. in a crew of men and her being surrounded by all of these guys and holding her own and standing for so many different things, showing that you can be sexual and you can also rap about different stuff at that same time is just extremely important. And then Missy, because I can't leave her out, same thing as Left Eye, the Afrofuturism, kind of putting herself on display and showing a different type of femininity as this larger size black woman who can still own her sexuality and doesn't have to cover or try to hide or try to like shy away from who she is. Like, those are my three. They're, they're up there. I actually want to agree with you about Missy. Um, I think that she's like really underrated as like, a musician overall. Yeah. I went to a party recently that was just dedicated to her music. Oh my God. And I was like, one of my friends was DJing and I was just like, oh my, we forgot about all these hits. Yeah. Like we forgot about all these hits. Um, we forgot about how Missy brought the brat back into the yes. fold at yeah. one point, you yeah. know? And I'm just kind of like, 
she was such she's the person who brings together like all these women MCs for ladies night yeah you know, <laughs> that ends up yeah. being like a monster hit I think the brat is really underrated um and she didn't ever reach the kind of like pinnacle of success that a lot of other female rappers um reach I mean mostly she was doing like stints in jail just had a, a whole bunch of other stuff going on um but like just in terms of like rap actual rapping and lyricism I think that she's like really really underrated Yo-Yo or Mia X just because I feel like a lot of the music that comes from the South South. and even the West Coast still is very like men, 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 men. Like we know Too Short or we know Wheezy or we know Master P, but like those two women in their own right kind of like forged a path for women coming from the West Coast with um, Yo-Yo and women coming from the South, Mia X. So I just think they're just not talked about enough. And I know Mia got like sick at one point mm-hmm. and then she decided to not rap anymore. So everyone makes their own decisions about like where they want to be and what they want to do. But I just think it's so important that when we like talk about women who like paved the way, like, yes, we have Lil' Kim, obviously I love her, but like there are people from these specific regions that like we got to highlight. Chicago. <laughs> I was like, okay, this one I know. <laughs> um, Left Eye, Angie Martinez, The Brat, Missy. Like. Okay, that was like, that would be my guess. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna guess, um, I'm gonna guess Yo MTV Raps. Okay, <laughs> I was like. Yeah, I'm gonna guess Jean Grey. Stefani, right? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, I, I remember that song. song. Hey, Kamaya. Yeah. My favorite female rapper, entrepreneur, hip hop person would be Queen Latifah. You know, got into television. She gave us Living Single, which is like what my life is based on. <laughs> She lived in a brownstone with near all her friends. Um, she ran a magazine. Um, and then, you know, she also did film. And she just, like, broke into other industries and has always maintained a pretty consistent, like, persona, even throughout her age. And just is, like, really graceful and, like, classy and, like, moves between... She had a television show for a while, um, a talk show. And just, like, puts people on when she can. I just was always impressed with her, like moving back and forth between different parts of the industry or the entertainment industry. And now she's doing building affordable housing in Newark. It's so hard to break into music already and then to break into hip hop and then to break into television and then to break into film and then to show like black women characters in this dynamic way on TV. So like, yeah, gotta give it up to her. She's definitely one of my favorites. She's queen. She's a queen. (laughs) You know, I guess, like, when I was coming up and I would get, like, 
Vibe magazine. You know, like, this was, like, a big thing to do, like, hip-hop journalism. Yeah. Um, Dream Hampton was, like, a, a really big part of that, about, like, chronicling hip-hop and, like, writing about it. That stuff is now an archive that we can look back on and read about what was happening at particular times. And then all the way up until now, so she's the one who made the R. Kelly documentary. Yeah. Um, and so, like, still kind of staying in the lane of, like, music journalism, but talking about this other aspect of, like, sexual assault. Or um, she's the, like, co-writer for uh, Jay-Z's Decoded. Decoded yeah. um, and so she just is, like, around making sure that, like, hip-hop enters these other venues. Like, yeah. journalism, um, you know, all kinds of print media documentaries, like, yeah. that kind of thing. I would have to say Danielle Smith who started at, I don't, know what, I, I don't even know if she started at Vibe, but I know she worked at Vibe and then transitioned to Billboard. And I'm pretty sure she's with The Undefeated now, if mm-hmm. I'm not incorrect. But just like reading some of her work and like I studied a lot of like her stuff like in school when I was in college, just like people that have like a respect for the art form. Um, I'll also say Trisha Rose, who's written like a lot of books on hip hop and hip hop history and kind of just showing that you can have this like respect for hip hop while also criticizing um, some of the things in it that aren't cool and aren't okay. And then definitely uh, there's a woman, her name's uh, Brittany Cooper. I was going to say her too. <laughs> yes, yeah. her brother, she started uh, the Crunk Feminist collective. collective and just a lot of their work as well has just been very like focused on representing and showcasing the women that love hip hop while also not being afraid to critique or to analyze the things in it that might make you, you know, like raise an eyebrow, be like, yo, like what's up with this? So they're yeah. definitely some yeah. of my faves. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah. I, as you were talking, I was thinking Brittany Cooper, she's just also a huge fan of Southern hip hop. Yes. Um, which you just don't see like as much. So she's like, crunk is like her thing. Yeah. Um, but she's also a feminist. So she just yeah. talks about how like, you can like this kind of music and also be like, go to church. And right. also like, yeah. <laughs> like being a woman and not want to be like, you know, just in videos. Right. Um, so yeah, I would say yeah, Brittany Cooper. Yeah, that's, she's, that's a good she's one. A goat. She's yeah. like... <laughs> So Queen Latifah, we already mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, who Yo-Yo else? Yo-Yo was on Martin. She's played Kilo. Yeah, <laughs> Kilo. Yes. yes, she was. Uh, oh, oh, Remy Ma. Shows. I forgot about reality yeah. shows. Yeah, I'm forgetting. Remy Ma and, and Cardi B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was. She started it, right? Yo, yo. Freaky <laughs> low, low. Definitely inherently misogynistic. I think just because of the things that are allowed and the things, unfortunately, that certain rappers can get away with in their songs. You know, people can 
rap, like I put something in her sh- champagne, she didn't even know it, and then still be able to go and, you know, sell out, uh, you know, show or whatever. And that's not saying, you know, like, I don't even know. It's just so, so difficult when it's something that's so inherent. Even the protection of like R. Kelly, who is a part of hip hop culture. People can say he makes R&B music, but he is a part mm-hmm. of hip hop culture. The people around him who knew what he was doing for decades, the people who continued to make music with him, the people who would still book shows with him and still conduct interviews with him and make him look like he was cool in a fun light instead of seriously addressing what it was that he was doing. I definitely think um, it's just misogynistic and we don't protect women. And I think even deeper than that is when it comes to black women in hip hop, our voices, our images, and our bodies also aren't protected. So that's something that just has to be reworked and kind of broken apart from like the ground up. I would say that like I think of hip hop as an American art form, um, mm-hmm. and America is misogynistic. You <laughs> you, America you is go. violent, um, and so like this is a genre of music that's like born out of people's experience and like this country, and so not to compare because nobody asked that question, but I think hip hop has a lot of potential, right? Um, right? Cause we're even doing this episode about women in hip hop and we're talking about how women have been there from the very beginning. Um, not to say that it's not misogynistic, not to say that there is not um, sexism and not to say this, right. that it doesn't have these elements of, of, you know, patriarchal domination. I also think like a lot of the gatekeepers in hip hop, just yeah. like in a lot of the other things we have in this country, like they're men, like the men yep. are controlling your image, they're the ones that are filming your shoot. They're yeah. the ones that are, you know, in the studio. They might yeah. be the ones producing your songs. Mm-hmm. They're the ones conducting your interview. They're the ones that own the media site that yes, you're going. That you is know, producing, like they, yeah. they are the gatekeepers. So I think, and it's so hard to say, you know, we got to have women in all these places because you kind of have to rise up to get to those mm-hmm. levels. But that's really where it starts. So maybe when somebody goes in a room and they're looking for a writer for their album or a producer or they're looking to do an interview, somebody saying, yo, like, we would like a lady to do this. So, mm-hmm. you know, put put someone out there who looks like the woman we're bringing in to help create this art. Like, I think it also starts there, too. There's definitely this rap group. Blem. It's a collective of black trans and femme women, and their music is really, really, really good. So I would advise y'all all to listen to them. Um, people like EVA, who is editor, I'm pretty sure, over at OK Player. She, she did an article recently where she interviewed kind of like a body expert, and they sat and broke down the R. Kelly, like, interview with Gail King and they mm. analyzed his body like reactions to see you know whether he was being dishonest you know just so many different things that I feel like anybody else could have just taken that interview and like R. Kelly is upset with Gail King like they took the time to really like analyze it and a lot of people that are in charge of these publications might not have done that so people like EVA um writers like Najma who is like amazing um Kamaya you should listen to Miss Kanaya you should listen to Megan The Stallion, you should listen to. Rico Nasty, I'm sure everyone like listens to now, but there are like so many people. One person right now that I'm like waiting for them to really blow nationally is LaKayla47. Yes! Um, and so she's out of Brooklyn, and it's like rare that I hear something new that I get really excited mm-hmm. about <laughs> and that I like work to try to put like other people on too. But she's someone who I just think is like so cutting edge and so dope. Like, literally just talented but then also so creative um and is doing this really interesting stuff with image like yeah. so she'll just wear like a ski, a mask, ski mask all the time, all the time. <laughs> you know? to all be the like time. don't worry about this right. like worry about this um right. and so i think that like you know she's doing just really interesting stuff with like production and music just really creative and doing like amazing things musically yeah. um and just in terms of like what women in hip hop do or can do, I think she's right. really experimenting with that in a way that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Lyrics to go. It's been three weeks since you've been looking for your friend. Oh, okay. The one you let hit it and never called you again. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the top, bitch. Yeah. Ring, kick, rock, sis. Uh, I never <laughs> Ooh, hey. Yeah, love Cardi. 
Oh no! Ah! <laughs> I'm not gonna get it. I'm like, if it would have played like a second longer, maybe I don't know the rest, but no. Clear blue and unconditional. Skies have dried the tears from my eyes. No. My lonely cries. My only bleed. I hope this one the folk who can't cope with such an enduring pain that it keeps them in the fall. Aww. Contact and in fact, the style gets harder. No. <laughs> and I like was playing this the other day, like on repeat, coming from the gym. Who's next? Mm. I know it's where the bag at. And I'm all the way up. Okay. Ain't no stress, chicka booze wanna be. I ain't talking Jay. I can't remember what she said. I'm talking V, but, but I'm talking V. I'm not talking V. <laughs> I haven't listened to that song in so long. That's no name telephone. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> Hardcore. Hardcore little Oh, man. yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that one was going to be first. Oh, oh Miss Education on Warren Hill. Hill. Oh, I don't know the name of this album. I don't either. <laughs> I mean, it's on there, but. <laughs> Pink oh, Pink Friday. No, no, Pink Friday. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Missy Elliott is super duper fly. That's a good album. Oh, uh, Cardi B. Invasion of Cardi Privacy. Cardi Hey guys, this is Nadira. Make sure you follow The Gumbo on all social media at T-H-E-G-U-M-B-O so you can stay up to date with all of our events, all of our articles, and any other fun things that we do. Also, you can follow me if you want at Hi Nadira on all social media. Thanks, y'all. Hey everybody, this is Aja again. Make sure you follow Get Hip at Get X Hip on all social media platforms. Women have played an integral role in hip hop since the beginning. From undeniable lyricism and talent to conquering other industries and entertainment, women in hip hop have forged paths for all. With the rise of various women in hip hop this year, the future seems to be promising. Happy International Women's Month. Get hit. Pop pop. <laughs>